Thanks again, Gav, for saying that I should give one of my personal bases away. Dudes, hopefully you're having a wicked day out there. Uh, today is a super special day and a super sad day as well because we're doing the ultimate jazz bass giveaway and we're giving away, or I'm giving away, th this is my personal jazz bass. It's the, ah, it's his fault. He, he, he hoodwinked me into doing this. He was like, I've got a great idea. We're gonna give away your personal jazz bass, Scott. I was like, yeah, it's wicked. Well, people are going nuts for it. And then this morning, I shed a tear. But anyway, so we get, I'm giving away this, and I'm also giving away this 1969 original. Okay, this is a 1969 original jazz bass. So if you stick around, um, I'm gonna tell you later in the video how you can win one of these. And we're also giving away um, some Sire jazz basses, and we're also giving away some SBL bass straps, and some memberships, and some stuff I've probably forgotten about. But stick around, and I'll tell you exactly how you can get your hands on them. But in this video, there's actually something more important that I'm going to be talking about. What, what can be more important than you actually winning one of these bases? But in this video, it actually is, we're going to cover something more important. Because what I'm really interested in, and I know that tons of you are as well, is that when you are buying an instrument such as one of these, like what do you actually go for? Do you go for a real vintage bass, like a 1969 jazz bass like this? Or do you go for a custom shop reissue like this? This is a 1964 custom shop reissue. It's like one of the relict ones, so it's got beautiful lacquer that's all. It's basically like a custom base, but new, and I'm really into them. Like, I'm a huge fan of these custom shop reissues. But how do you actually make your mind up when you're buying one of these bases? And we've kind of thought about this and boiled it down into five critical questions that you need to ask yourself when purchasing or looking to purchase a base like this. So without further ado, let's get into what you need to be thinking about and the five critical questions when you're buying either a vintage instrument or a reissue instrument and how to make up your mind. So obviously number one on the list and it's probably the thing that we all think about first is the price, right? So when it comes to a custom shot reissue like this versus a vintage, in this case, 1969, there is a big price difference. These retail at around three and a half thousand dollars, I think. Like it depends where you go, but you know, let's say sort of like around three and a half thousand, where these are, well, this was almost double. This was six and a half thousand, was it, for this one? So yeah, there's a, a big price difference. And when you're thinking about it, you need to take that into consideration, right? So when it comes to price, I've got to say that the custom shop is the winner because obviously it's almost half the price of this 1969 jazz bass, okay? So in terms of number one, the price, the custom shop gets it. Now number two is consistency. And in my opinion, this is where the vintage instrument gets a bit of a spanking, right? How would you like a spanking? How would you like a punch in the nose? Because Vintage, vintage instruments, yes, you can get like killing ones, but you can also get dogs. <coughs> and that is kind of a big deal, especially when buying online. We'll get into that in a few minutes. Vintage bases versus new custom shop instruments, you know, the custom shop instruments, they just completely destroy the vintage bases in terms of consistency. So again, with number two, the custom shop gets it. It's the winner. See what I mean? Sounds just so good, doesn't it? And just, you know, thank, thanks again, Gav, for saying that I should give one of my personal bases away. Great, cheers. Um, happy birthday to you. Which, oh, it's my birthday tomorrow. Anyway, my <laughs> back on the ranch. Okay, so number three is investment because, and I kind of like alluded to this earlier on. Yes, the vintage base costs more, but the vintage base is gonna go up in value once you purchase it, and the newer custom shop reissue base is gonna go down for the most part, right? So in terms of investment, yeah, the, the, the vintage base gets it. If you buy it, your money's gonna be good and it's gonna go up over time. You know, custom shop's gonna go down. The vintage is clearly the winner here. So the next up, number four is reliability. And unfortunately, again, the custom, the custom shop's edging, the, it's edging forward, right? The custom shop is edging forward here. The custom shop gets it because 
I have played many a vintage bass, and when you and if you've bought a vintage bass before, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes they can be a bit cranky in various places, such as inside the control cavity, you can get dry joints and all kinds of things going on in there, you know, jack sockets. Truss rods can be a bit cranky on older instruments as well. And, and these are broad brush strokes. I'm not saying every vintage instrument has this. It's just in the past I have suffered, you know, various things like this. So it's worth taking it into consideration when you're buying an instrument. On the flip side, a custom shop like this, well, it's new, so it's going to be pretty consistent. And all, although, you know, it, I don't, you know, all instruments do get sort of like, you know, little snaggly bits going on, but custom shops, they're going to be pretty consistent right out of the gate. So yeah, again, the custom shop is the winner for this one. Now, number five, and don't go anywhere because we've got a bonus number six for you as well that we kind of thought about when we when were going through the list, we were like, oh, what about number six? So number five, okay, is the X Factor. And what is it? Like, it's the mojo, right? And in terms of X Factor, I've got to say, um, let me just clarify what X Factor is. I'm sure you guys have been in, you know, bass shops, music shops before, and you've tried out a ton of basses and you pick one up and you're just like, this is just the best bass I've ever played in my life, okay? The vintage basses, for me personally, take it there, okay? Although the custom shop style basses are more consistent, okay, I've never actually picked one up where I'm just like, oh, this is the best bass I've ever played in my life. Whereas the vintage basses, yeah, they're less consistent, but when you find a diamond in the rough, and if you've found one out there, let me know in the comments because I'm there. I've like I've been in that bass shop. In fact, I was in a bass shop a few months ago, uh, Bass Direct in the UK. I played a jazz bass. It was one of the best jazz basses I've ever played in my life. Unfortunately, somebody had bought it, but that was one of those diamonds in the rough, okay? It was the X factor. And for me, you do find those X factor basses that, that they're like, They've just, they're, they're the vintage instruments that are being gigged a thousand, a million times over and have got that kind of sort of like earthy feel about them. It's not all vintage instruments for sure because like there's a lot of dogs out there when it comes to vintage instruments. But when it comes to the X Factor, the vintage instruments, they're, they're out there. There are the diamonds in the rough. So when you find one, get it. So the, for this one, the X Factor, the, the Mojo Factor, the vintage bass gets it. So number six, our bonus one that we forgot about at the start, right? Number six is availability. Because obviously, you know, when shopping for a base, sometimes, you know, it, it, there's more available and sometimes there's less available. So in terms, and this isn't kind of like what, how you'd think it would turn out. If, you're on, if you go to reverb.com, right, and type in um, vintage jazz bass, a, a slew of them are going to come up. There's a lot of vintage jazz basses on reverb. Whereas if you put custom shop, in, uh, custom offender custom shop in there, they're actually not going to be as many as the vintage ones. And that's because, you know, they've been making these vintage basses for years and the custom shop ones are relatively, well, they're not new, but you know, there's just less of them. So vintage basses, yes, they're more available than the custom shop basses. But here's the flip side, okay? In terms of buying online, I would pretty much never buy a vintage instrument. If, and this is if you're a player. If you're like a collector, you probably don't give two hoots, right? But if I was a player and I'm looking for the X Factor bass, I really wouldn't be buying a vintage bass online because you have no idea whether it's a dog or whether it's a killing bass full of mojo. And there's no, you know, reading that description, like it's just not going to tell you whether it has got that mojo or not. And it, the look of it has got nothing to do with it either. So you kind of sort of like, you, you know, you kind of swing in blind, right? Whereas the custom shops, as I said, they're pretty consistent. You know what you're getting. So yeah, you're going to be able to buy them online and you know, you're going to be pretty safe. So the key here is this is actually a tie break. We've got a tiebreaker because yeah, these are more available, but I wouldn't ever buy one online. These are less available. I would buy them online. So in terms of availability and being able to get your hands on them online, this one is going to be a tiebreaker. So there you have it. When you look at the, you know, when you look at the results, obviously the, the custom shops got it that edged forward and won this competition. But I've got to say, like me personally, if I was looking for that that vintage base with the X Factor, I'd definitely take a vintage base with the X Factor over a custom shop because yep, it's gonna cost more and yep, it's gonna take a ton of searching to actually find one, but you're gonna get a killing base that has all of the mojo in the world and 
your money's going to be safe as well because the value of that instrument is going to go up. But who cares about all of that crap anyway? How do you actually win one of these bases? I suppose that's what everybody's thinking. It's like Scott just cut to the chase and tells us how to win one of these bases. Well, first of all, just if you're wondering what they are, again, this is a 64 um, Fender Custom Shop. It's my personal jazz bass, um, and I'm throwing this in the ring. What am I even thinking? And this one I actually grabbed um, especially for this uh, this giveaway. It's a 1969 original jazz bass. Look at, look at that buckle rash there. That is so beautiful, isn't it? It is a killing, killing bass. Like really one of the great ones, which is why I chose it for this um, for this competition. So yeah, great day for you guys, <laughs> sad day for me. Anyway, if you wanna grab your chance at winning one of these bases, I've put a link below and also so hit the link or you can just go to scottsbasegiveaway.com and you'll find it there it'll take you through just stick your email in the inbox and you'll be automatically registered to uh, to win and when you do that as well you also get this all these other opportunities to get more entries as well so if you like share it and just hit the link and it's all self-explanatory. Let me not complicate it here, okay? So hit the link and it's super easy. And as well as winning one of these jazz bases, you also get the chance to win a, um, I think we've got some Sire jazz bases we're throwing in the ring. Um, we've got some SBL bass straps we're throwing in the ring. We've got memberships. We've got a lot, it's like 20 grand's worth of bass gear we're giving away, it's crazy. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel as well. So next time we do one of these giveaways, you get notified and make sure you put your no notifications on as well. And if you've done all of that, if you've entered the competition, if you've subscribed to the YouTube channel, if you wanna show me a bit of love, go over to scottsbasslessons.com and check out what me and the team are doing. We're building the best bass school in the world for you guys so you get to study with the best bass players in the world from the comfort of your own home. Simple as that. Anyway, take it easy and I'll see you next time in the shed.